side street round the hotel. It only leads to private residences. It's closed. The door is locked. Probably just another harbor warehouse. They're empty, no fish. However, they stink as if they were full. It smells of fish. You can tell even over here. Crates, fish, and more fish in even more crates. Not much, except the smell. I have no idea where I should call. Soaked from the rain, they couldn't bear my weight. Dirty covers from just about anything, and not much else. There's no key in the lock. I'm not going to poke about in that. It's just garbage and dirt from the hotel. There's a lot of money in it. I've taken some extra for the journey. It's quite preserved even after all the years of being buried in the mud. It's made of silver, I'd say. I've come for this from as far away as France. Bonsoir, monsieur. Good evening. What rooms have you got free? Uh, I'm sorry, sir, but all our rooms are already taken. I could do with something small. I won't stay long. I'm afraid we're fully occupied, monsieur. A theater company from Poland came in just a little while ago and took almost the whole floor. Oh, certainement, you understand. There is nothing I can do. There's no way I could get a room at this hour? Are, are you sure? No, monsieur. Try asking again tomorrow. Maybe an apartment will become free until then. Well, that's too late, but what can I do? Thanks for your time. Excusez-moi. I have to do some work now. How's it going? Ah, uh, okay, I suppose. Will you have a glass with me? Or better yet, two. What do you say? No, thanks. Oh, come on. Let's do at least one, right? No, really. I must stay sober. <laughs> oh, that's too bad, then. 
Anyway, I enjoy drinking by myself, too. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. No offense intended. Why are you wearing a suit? A party of some sort? No, this is my work clothes. I'm partying for everybody here. <laughs> for who? Well, everybody from our ensemble. <laughs> I'm a theater director. See? Oh, that theater company from Poland, right? Ex 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 exactly. Well, I'm waiting for the last latecomer, but it's getting somewhat out of hand. <laughs> anyway, I don't mind. <laughs> but that Daniel, he's gonna get it when I run into him. But before that, I'll have another one. <laughs> Daniel? Yeah? I'm waiting to see if he shows up after all so that I can sign a joint reservation. But I... I better go to bed already. I'm supposed to direct the premiere tomorrow. Oh my, the premiere. Maybe I could take care of it for you. What? The premiere? No, the reservation. Oh, well that would be cool. I'm pretty sick of this flunky here. The desk clerk. Uh, the clerk? Yeah, he wouldn't quit bugging me, so I got stuck here, waiting. I'll see what I can do. What's the full name of that colleague of yours? Daniel. Hmm, Daniel Bodrovsky. Yeah, that's it. Daniel Bodrovsky? Are you sure? Nah. Is your hearing okay? Dobrovsky. Dobrovsky. All right, you can rely on me. You sure? Okay, I'll just down this last one and then hit the sack. And now, I'd rather say goodbye. All this talk is beginning to tire me. I can imagine. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> A set of hotel matches. I'll take them. The reception desk telephone. I don't know the number. The keys to all the rooms. The reception desk telephone. I don't know the number. There's only two left. There is the reception desk telephone number on the back side, 547-92612. The reception desk telephone. The number is 547-92612. Bonsoir, Hotel Safran, reception desk. How can I help you? My name is uh, Dobrovsky, and I have a reservation for a week's stay with my colleagues who have already booked in. I suppose uh, you're with the Polish Theater Company, n'est-ce pas? Yes, unfortunately, illness has kept me in bed, so I'd like to cancel my reservation. Is there anything special I have to do for that? Oh, oui, I see now. It's not a problem. Uh, may I ask your name again? Uh, Dobrovsky. Daniel Dobrovsky. Just a moment. I need to look you up in the reservation list. Ah, oui. Your reservation is now cancelled. I'll take care of everything. Don't worry. No, thank you. Is that all? I'd like to get back to resting. Certainement, monsieur. Thanks for calling and have a nice evening. Au revoir. Goodbye.
Monsieur, would you please step to the reception desk? It's good that you have returned. It looks like you're lucky today. A room on the first floor has just gotten free unexpectedly. Would you still like to book in? Oh, yes, of course. I'll take it. In that case, uh, all that's needed is your registration in the guest book. May I have your name? It's Martin Holland. Here's your key, room number 2424. Thanks. Oh, and one more thing. Oui? Oui? Can you look up a telephone number for me? It's a friend of mine. I had the number in my cell phone and it broke. Professor Francois de Vilde. I'll get right on it. Thanks. I'll be back later. I wish you a pleasant stay in the Hotel Saffron, monsieur. The key to my room. The journey was long. I need to have a little rest. This isn't my room. I found the telephone number for you, monsieur. Professeur François de Vilde, 873-745-12. You can use the phone here at the reception desk. Excellent, thanks. It's me. Oh, I'm glad to hear you again, Martin. Why didn't you call earlier? That one is a long story. I, I lost my cell phone. Have you run into problems? More than that. We are not the only ones interested in this matter. That was to be expected. You should tell me more in person. I agree. But one thing that I must know right away. Curiosity won't let me wait. Have you been successful? Yes, I have. Excellent. I knew I could rely on you. Where are you now? Can you make it to my mansion? If everything goes as planned, I should be able to get there in about an hour. Very well. Let's not lose any more time. I'll be expecting you. I'll set off immediately. And Martin, be careful. More than ever. Can I talk to you for a minute? Can I have a word with you? Can't you see I've got work to do? Well, I, I need your boat. What now? You can forget about that right now. See this pile of crates? It's got to be unloaded by midnight. And I need a good night's sleep, too. So leave me alone. Listen, there's no way I can get anywhere at this hour without your boat. 
I'll pay you premium for the ferriage. Yeah, now well, that sounds better. I never reject money. But I can't go anywhere until I unload. Except, maybe. Now you could give me a hand with the crates, and when we're done, we can set off. No, that's impossible. I've got to be there as soon as I can. Or come. But like I said, first the load, then the boat. Hey, can I talk to you for a minute? So you changed your mind, eh? Yes, I have, I think. How long is it going to take, approximately? Well, if we do hurry, it could set off in about an hour. Okay, let's do it. That's something I like to hear. See? Just a little hard work and sweat, it's done. <sighs> Damn crates, what the heck do you have in these? I can barely feel my hands. Ah. In fact, I feel as if I can touch my knees. <laughs> now you know how tough a job us fishermen were. Thanks, man. If it wasn't for you, I'd probably have to sweat it out this morning by myself. Guess I'm supposed to say you're welcome, but I, I don't actually think so. <laughs> what a joker. I like that. Okay, let's settle the price so we can go. What? You still want money? Hey, like I said earlier, I'm not sailing anywhere at night. All right, you'll get it on the way back, agreed? Deal. Welcome aboard my humble boat. She's got some miles on her, but not even the biggest waves can slow her down. <laughs> I sure hope we get to that island fast. Don't worry, we'll be off in a minute. Be back in an hour or so. Wait for me here. Okay. The walk to the mansion only took me a little while. I've come this way so many times before that I could easily do it with a blindfold on. Soon I was standing in front of the main gate. My uncle's mansion. A beautiful residence in winter as well as in summer. It's me, Martin. Come on in. Welcome, Martin. I couldn't wait to see you here. Sit down. Tell me everything you've found. I, I don't even know where to start. So much has happened. You already know what went on in Prague. Yes, unfortunately I do. I deeply regret Barbora's death. What happened to her was not an accident. Somebody has been a step ahead of us all this time. I should have anticipated that. I could have warned her. If only I had known, I would have been more careful. The murderer is still out there somewhere. You mustn't blame yourself. Yes, you're probably right. There is no time for sorrow. Tell me what you have discovered. I must know it all. Right. Well, when I arrived, I knew instantly that I was at the right place. I told my uncle the whole story from my arrival at the mine to the unexpected rendezvous with the colleague deep within the corridors of the German archive. He grew very excited when I started describing the underground shelter. And when I was talking about the secret laboratory, his eyes shimmered and his expression became even more tense. 
It was obvious that I had found what he had been looking for in vain for so long. When I was finished with my narration, it took him a while to speak again. We are close to obtaining the answer to perhaps the oldest questions that mankind has ever had. Finally, we have an opportunity to prove to everybody that we are not alone and have never been alone on Earth. What you have seen in that laboratory were remains of a machine that had not been built by the hand of man. An artifact so powerful that it can heal and even make life longer. But that's not the reason I sent you there. My main and only objective is to acquire real evidence of extraterrestrial life. That thing you showed me makes me certain that we are close. It is similar to the one I have, only the shape is different. Have a look. Yes, they're almost identical. This one I found many years ago in the Temple of Stone, and I'm positive there's three of them in total. Yours, which God knows how the Germans have seized, mine, and the one hidden in the Temple of Dawn. I made this discovery on my last expedition. Unfortunately, I didn't succeed in retrieving the last statue from the temple. Which is your task now. We must not cease to search. Of course, but where exactly do we resume? Everything has been arranged already. I had plans this long before I even called you to go to Prague. The destination is Mexico. It's a pity I'm too old for such a journey. You'll have to set out alone. It won't be easy in all this haste. This letter here is for my good friend in Mexico, with whom I went through many a great experience in my youth. He owns a junk shop right in the town square of a small village called Teculut. Finding this spot isn't exactly easy, but you'll manage. Look him up and make use of his help. I'll try to. The airline tickets are in the envelope along with the letter. I will put both our keys into my safe for the night. Come pick them up in the morning. Agreed. At least I'll sleep more calmly. I'll also give you my map that I acquired in Mexico. It might help you. But let's leave that for tomorrow. Now go. After I left the mansion, I felt a mixture of sensations within me. An ambition to discover and prove something, but also a fear of the unknown. Destination Mexico, first class. The letter I'm supposed to give to my uncle's friend in Tecolut. On my way back to the hotel, so many thoughts were running through my mind, I hardly paid any attention to the sailing on the waves of night. It didn't take long for the foggy silhouette of the harbor to emerge from the darkness. Hey, you! Who is it? Good evening. Hopefully we haven't been too rough on you. I actually despise violence, but my son appears to take great pleasure in it. Uh, uh, who are you? And, and what do you want from me? Certainly you remember my son. What? That is your son? Unfortunately, I overestimated his abilities when I sent him into the mine after you. Father! Quiet! You see, I actually respect my adversaries. Too bad I can't say the same thing. I understand. But now, listen very carefully. You don't have the faintest idea what you're dealing with. Oh, I've heard that one before. 
I have devoted my whole life to Project Nibiru, and now that I'm so close to finishing it, nobody can stop me. Nobody! Project Nibiru? What do you know about it anyway? Everything! It was me who started it, and it's going to be me who gets it through the final phase. That's gotta be nonsense. What the heck are you talking about? I mean, don't get offended, but at this point, that project is over 70 years old. You see, I've got proof. I found a journal down there, but I've got it right here. Not anymore. I took my precious notes back. Hold on. Are you trying to tell me that it was you who wrote that journal? I'm not stupid. I can count. You would have to be at least 90. Maybe even a hundred years old? Exactly 102. I say math is your strong subject. The project was supposed to serve as a new weapon for the Reich's war machinery. But those fools didn't believe me. That's why I built that underground shelter and continued the research alone. I am the scientist you read about in the journal, young man. I don't believe you. You want proof? You saw in my old labs the remains of a machine that I acquired in Mexico many years ago, right? Well, yes. That technology is an actual miracle. It can keep an arbitrary cell alive almost indefinitely. No, that's just impossible. How could you... Know all this if I were lying? You can keep thinking about it when we leave. Now that you have even managed to open my safe, I used my original notes from the journal to finish my work. In other circumstances, I would actually thank you. Pity we have to part now. Farewell. been waiting for you to wake up before I leave. We have some unfinished business, remember? Well, I did what I had to do. I didn't have a choice. True enough. Too bad you almost got me killed. Anyway, that doesn't matter now. The situation has turned around quite a bit, don't you think? My father is very old and rather sentimental. He preferred you to stay alive. But now... He isn't here, and I have different plans, you understand? And I won't let you stand in our way again! It doesn't seem I have much choice now, either. Smart! Can you see that gas bottle over there, on the table? When I'm finished with you, its effects will get to you, as well as all the details in that head of yours. Quite a virtuous idea, don't you think? I can certainly see it makes you delighted. Is it your first, then? You'd better keep your mouth shut. But, since I've had no remorse before my father, I'll give you one more chance. What? Am I supposed to kill myself before it tears me apart? Oh, come on. Try again, with a little fantasy, my friend. You've still got one hand free. <laughs> what a pity I must leave now. This is certainly going to be a great show. So, have a nice day. Wait a minute. Farewell. somewhere to the ceiling. I can't reach it. I need to get 
get rid of those handcuffs. It's razor sharp. I have to get rid of them somehow. Time is on my side for a while now. I'll try to unlock the cuffs. I'd better leave them alone. I have no idea what's inside them, but they smell really bad. Salt for fish storage. The warehouse is loaded to the roof with crates and boxes. The door is locked. That was close. I barely escaped. But it isn't my life that's in danger now. I must warn the professor before they get to him. The presence of the police does not suggest anything nice. Hopefully I'm not too late. Monsieur, may I ask what is the purpose of your visit here? Uh, yes, I've come to see a friend. Monsieur Francois de Ville? Yes. I regret to tell you I have some very bad news. Monsieur Ville is dead. I am sorry. Dead? 